a lot deeper. But I guess to start off with, what is the 80-20 rule? Well, so a guy named Pareto, an Italian economist 100 years ago, figured out that in Italy and pretty much anywhere else he went, uh, 20% of the people owned 80% of the real estate and money, and 80% of the people owned the other 20%. And it didn't really seem to matter which country you went to or what political system they used or whatever. It tended to be true. While salespeople usually get told sooner or later that 20% of your customers produce 80% of your sales and 80% of your customers produce 20% of your sales. Uh, but I just thought that was kind of a rule of thumb, but it's actually a law of cause and effect. It's like a law of physics. And when, and not, o- not only is it pervasively true everywhere, like it's the size of files on your hard drive. It's, it's, it's the, the, the length of videos that you watched on YouTube. It's the, 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 how much traffic is running on the streets in your town. It's, it's 20, 20% of your carpet has 80% of the dirt because it gets 80% of the traffic in your house. I mean, this just goes on and on. If you go to the beach with a bucket and you, you, you pull sand out, the, the size of sand grains in the bucket will be 80, 20. So that's the first thing. I mean, it's absolutely everywhere. And most people have never been told this. Uh, well, not only that, but it's also fractal. So fractal is pattern inside a pattern inside a pattern where it's the same pattern over and over again. Well, there's an 80-20 inside every 80-20. There's another one and another one and another one. So that means that uh, that 20% of the 20% of the money uh, of the people own 80% of 80% of the money and 20 of the 20 of the 20 own 80 of the 80 of the 80. So this is true. Like if you look at incomes, um, the, all 7 billion people in the world follows an 80-20 curve, but then we can zoom into the Forbes 400, the Fortune 500, or the top 10 wealthiest people in the world, and it'll still be 80-20. So it's the most universal pattern that nobody ever told you about, or they only, they only told you about it in this very limited context. And so, so Gary, like I've never looked at your investment portfolio or anything, but I I, I would be willing to bet a, a large amount of money that 80% of your money came from 20% of your trades and 80% of the 80% came from 20% of the 20%. So what this means is that in the world, um, tiny levers swing huge doors. And this is true in every sphere of your life. It's true in politics. So, you know, the, the results of the entire uh, the, 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 the Democratic Party in the election last year or the Republican Party uh, last year, most of what happened was run by controlled, influenced by a dozen people, not hundreds or thousands of people. So if you know where the levers are, there's a great deal of power in the world. And most people really live their lives as though they're completely oblivious to this. That's, um, that's fascinating. I remember when I read your book for the first time, I just started seeing 8020 everywhere. You're exactly yeah. right. My investment portfolio, I saw it I, I, when I was driving around, it was just like it jumped out. Um, it's, it's, literally, it's literally everywhere. The, that's the most common comment that I get from people who read sales and uh, 8020 sales and marketing. They're like, oh my goodness, I'm looking out the window. There's a tree. Uh, the sap flowing the, through the tree is 8020. Uh, oh my goodness, there's a cloud. Uh, the moisture in the cloud is 80-20. There's a street. The traffic in the street is 80. Yes, it, it's just everywhere. And it, it greatly simplifies your life if, if, you, if it kind of clicks in, in your head. Yeah, absolutely. So what it seems to say, and I think that means true, we know where this is, where this is heading, but a lot of people will look at averages and say, well, here's the average and this is a normal distribution or however you want to think about it. But this kind of blows the whole idea of this is the average of something out of the water. Because what's the point of an average if, if everything, I mean, you just do this twice, you do 80, 20 twice, and you have 4% taking care of 64%. So that's right. Talk about averages, talk about how you think about um, how this changes the world. Well, so, so most people, 
are taught to any time anything statistical happens, the, the first word out of anybody's mouth is average, and the first picture in any statistician's mind is a bell curve, right? And we all went to school, and the professor or the teacher said, okay, the average was 77, and like we all know what that means. But if you, okay, so a science class, and the average is 77. Well, there's a different way of looking at the students in that, in that class. And the other way is, a power law. So, so the bell curve says, well, what, what, what did the average person in, in the, in the class do and how many were above average and how many were below average? But what 80, 20 says is, well, where is the science mojo concentrated among those students in the class? And if you put it on a traditional curve, it looks like a ramp where one side of that ramp just goes, it zooms up into the stratosphere. In other words, the number one, number two, number three student in the class, like if you take maybe two or three top students in the class, those three people have more science capability than everybody else in the class put together. And if you're concerned with actually accomplishing something in science, like hiring a scientist or finding a Nobel Prize winner or anything like that, the other people in the class don't matter. They're not going to pursue a career in science. Um, and the 77 is completely irrelevant, okay? Um, what a power law distribution law says, uh, and this is very useful in investing, is that Basically, if, they're, if foxes are 10 times as heavy as rabbits, then there's 10 times as many rabbits as foxes. And if there's 100, if, if, um, if rats are uh, 10 times, uh, one-tenth the size of, um, of rabbits, then there's 10 times as many rats as rabbits. And, and it goes all the way down to bacteria. It goes, goes all the way to to killer whales. And so, it, so this is how most things in business are, is they follow power laws that one tenth of the stuff has 10 times as much impact. And one, one hundredth of the stuff has a hundred times more impact. Okay. And so you look at people, the skills of people. So if we look at the skills of trader traders, 1% of the traders have a hundred times more trading mojo, intuition, capability, whatever it might be, than the other hundred. Now, the internet has really brought this outliers phenomenon much more to people's consciousness than it used to. So, like the entire internet is 50% run by four companies, right? Amazon, Google, Facebook, and Apple. Um, and and, and there's this enormous concentration of power in these very small places, right? Um, and, and without even talking to you about, you know, well, so the company that is hosting this webinar is a disruptive company. And the, the definition of a disruptive company is taking all of these fragmented little things that are going on out there, mostly independent of each other, in consolidating them into one single powerful force, right? Um, and so, you know, you only gave me this like little brief description of, of, of what your company's trying to do, but I can already like, it's consolidating this huge amount of power. And so, so a lot of what's going on in the world now is the very smart entrepreneurs, traders, investors, real estate people, marketers, whoever, are recognizing the tiny hinges that swing big doors and they're like, all right, how do we move that?